Hey everybody, this is me, it's Trista, and I'm back with another video. Okay guys, I'm not gonna do the long talking. I'm just going to get right into this video. I'm already nervous as it is because I don't know what I can and cannot say, but I'm going to say it. This has been a long awaited video. This has been a video that I have contemplated with doing with people doing it as a documentary, whatever the case is, guys. Um, but something is just compelling me to speak on this, and I feel like I have to. As you can tell from the title, this is going to be my personal experience. I may tie in a couple of people because I know a lot of people in the beauty industry, and of course I know a lot of people who are still employed with Sephora and who was employed with Sephora. And we can all attest to the same experience and the same story. So, without further ado, this is my story with working for Sephora. This the beauty guru or giant of the world. I started my journey back in 2018 with Sephora. Um, hold on guys, I'm just gonna let you know right now, this may seem a little, I'm jumping all over the place because there's so much. <laughs> I wish I had structure with you know, telling my truth, but it is what it is. I just have to come off the dome and speak freely. So I got hired in 2018 um, and I started my journey back when Sephora was Sephora. Sephora was beauty driven. It was fun. It was like a playground for makeup artists. You know, if you know, you know. I started at a very, very, very popular location in downtown Toronto. And um, if you know me, you know where I started right cool and just for the sake of legal legality i'm not going to say specific stores but if you know me you know which store i'm going to be speaking about any which way so it is what it is if you guys want to put it on blast then you can do that on your own so anyways fast forward you know okay still loving sephora still loving you know learning i started as a cashier first and then i moved on up to color when i felt more confident being a makeup artist because you know back then i wanted to become the world's best makeup artist the most universal sought after makeup artist work on tv television and film and all of that good stuff okay so i would admire the senior artists at the time that they were called senior artists in um that location and and surrounding locations of course because at the time sephora was beauty driven and um yeah I enjoyed it uh, for the time being and then you know life happened I moved to another location and this is where the downfall of Sephora was for me okay so okay guys I really really care about the beauty industry I really care about helping people and figuring out the things that they don't know that they need or don't need or whatever the case is in the beauty industry okay i love it with a passion i love helping people and i love beautifying people so i call myself a beauty enhancer i don't call myself a makeup artist i call myself a beauty enhancer anyways guys as the years were going by i would notice that sephora started taking the beauty out of Sephora. There was no focus on the artistry anymore. There was no focus on, you know, trainings or just the art form. And um, I noticed it slightly changing when they started taking away or letting go, you know, titles in Sephora. And I'm like, okay, cool. Then they began certifying everybody under the sun. But to move it back a little bit more. They started hiring, well, they changed our uniforms, whatever the case is, and we started looking, like if you guys remember Sephora, Sephora had the black and red dresses, okay? That was like, ugh, the times. But then, all of a sudden, we look like tomboys. We look like we're wearing pants. They took away the dresses so we don't look feminine anymore we don't feel girly we just look like uniformed 
fast food workers. That's what I felt we look like. And we are represented by LVMH. So you'd think that our uniforms would represent us, right guys? No, not for Sephora. Whatever that is, I don't know. I don't know what was the point of that because at the end of the day, in the beauty industry, image is everything. So to take away that from Sephora was like mm, the beginning of the downfall for me. Then they started hiring people that have zero background in the beauty industry. I'm a firm believer that you don't belong in an industry. If you don't have the experience in the industry, you don't belong there. That's just my opinion on that. They started hiring people with zero beauty background to manage people like myself, me. Okay, I'm gonna speak from me. Okay guys, cause this is where I had a lot of disconnect with my leads, my managers. Um, because I could not respect people that were coming into the Sephora culture, the Sephora world and trying to, I don't know, manage me. They didn't know more than me. That was the problem that I faced when they would say, oh, Tristan, you're not coachable or, you know, whatever the case is. And I'm like, okay. Don't create that narrative for me. I'm very much coachable, but you would have to know more than me to coach me or for me to learn off of. And I think that's just common sense for anybody. So anyways, as I was seeing that and they were hiring people over me that have had so much experience and hiring people that maybe came off a construction site or came out of Home Depot or not saying there's anything wrong with those companies, but I'm saying it's day and night. It's oranges and apples. Do you get what I mean? To manage me, somebody who was like dedicated to the industry and the artistry and just beauty as a whole. And you started hiring people that just don't even look the part, don't put an effort in themselves. They just don't care about the business. And then you have the people not only the management we're have we're hiring people now that have zero background in in the in the makeup or beauty industry and they just want a fun job they just want the free products or playing in makeup whatever the case is but then they're not understanding how crazy and detrimental that is to the business when clients are constantly complaining and saying hey i'm not getting help over here like they don't even know what they're talking about Right, so Sephora was never even concentrating on the fact that they were just hiring little girls, young, I just want a job for the summer, not taking it seriously, and then expecting results, right? Coming down on the seniors in the, in the store to pick up the slack. I didn't like that at all because the clients would constantly, constantly complain. And I would stand out because I actually cared about the clients. I was actually servicing to my clients. Another thing with, with Sephora, they don't like you spending time with clients. They don't, so you have to rush. And you're rushing for what reason? I feel like you cannot put a time limit on anybody's concerns when they walk into a store. You have to take the proper time to listen and to activate you know, your skills. You have to be able to figure out people's problems on the spot, but you can't do that in two minutes and then brush them off and do whatever. This is what Sephora wants you to do, okay? That I never agreed with. I got in trouble a lot of time for <laughs> spending time with clients because I just felt like I need to help you. I can't rush you out of the store. I can't rush you. I'm not even getting commission for this stuff. So it's not like I'm benefiting from it. I might as well do my job. I want to help the company save some money because if I give you the wrong thing, I send you on your way, you're going to return it anyways, right? So far, I never really thought about that stuff like that. And I always promised myself that if I was ever in a situation to become a manager, these are things that I would implement because it's about the clients at the end of the day. But moving on, when I see Sephora stop caring about the beauty of the company, there were so many people that came in there with a dream of building their skills, wanting to become these beautiful makeup artists, 
and Sephora sucked the life out of out of everybody's dreams, including my own. I don't even want to beat a face anymore because it sucked the dreams and the goals and the aspirations out of me. And there were so many other females, other people, sorry, other artists, it doesn't matter, male or females that were there that came in there so excited. And before they even left or just even stayed, you can see the soul sucked out of them, the, the excitement, you know? just just sucked right out of them because they got their hopes up high coming to a company that promised things and just never produced it i would honestly call that place toxic and it's not that this company really goes over and beyond to like value you or anything and here's another example I'm going to give. Last year, they made, what, $10 billion, right? <laughs> and this kind of went viral because for a company that made that much money, I'm not going to get into wages and how much they pay people because obviously everybody is going to feel like they're underpaid. It doesn't matter where you go. It is what it is. But they really actually gave us cookies. Like, so that viral video that went around saying that Sephora made so much money and then they all they did was give their employees stale cookies, that was really real. And a lot of us felt like that was a slap in our face because it's like we're struggling just to even make 10 cents, 25 cents, a dollar raise or whatever the case is. And we're the ones that's making this business money. And there's no way that anybody should be suffering working for such a big company financially. And we all were you know another thing that was so uncool about being a makeup artist a be paid um paid beauty service paid beauty service whatever a makeup artist we couldn't even keep our tips so when when clients loved our work um we would have to give it to Sephora. And Sephora will then tax us on our tips. I don't know what other company has ever done that, but that to me is just very strange that you cannot even keep your tips for the work that you do. You know, for the longest time, I never wanted to get serviced or trained in makeup because I'm a self-taught makeup makeup artist but I did not want to be certified working there because I knew that outside of work I charge like almost a hundred dollars to to do a face right and when I used to watch all these girls running to like I want to get certified oh my god I want to I said do you know what you're doing <laughs> do you know what work you're going to be doing for your hourly rate like you're making sixteen dollars an hour that means you're beating a face for sixteen dollars and you don't even get to keep your tip. What Do you know how much work goes into making one face look good? Do you know how much work goes into a makeup session? And you're gonna look at me and tell me that I cannot keep my tip. Me, I can't keep my tip. And I must beat a face for $19, that's all. And that's not just one face for the day, you know, guys. You're probably doing five faces for the day. So while I did end up getting certified because I was trying to move up in the company and be a manager, that was one of the prerequisites. So I had to do it reluctantly. Then you guys, like my experience just started getting worse and worse and worse where it was just more so management fighting me because they were all about power tripping. They were all about controlling and making you feel like you were nothing. And I felt taken advantage of because I am a single mom. I would walk 45 minutes to work, 45 minutes back home. And they knew that. So they knew I needed that job. So what they do? Underpay me. They would pay people that came after me in that company more than me that had no 
experience more than me because they hated the fact that I knew a lot. They hated the fact that they couldn't break me. They hated the fact that they could not control me. And a lot of people, if you know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to get into where I don't, I don't want to use the word racist, but I've experienced racism at Sephora or racial jokes and nothing was done about it. Nothing was done about it. <laughs> so anyways, let's talk about race. What I noticed even in my last, the first place I started, I remembered a girl made a racial slur um, in a meeting that we all had, like a store meeting. And it went on for weeks about this whole situation. And nothing was done, of course, because nothing is ever done in the workplace when black people are getting attacked or people say jokes about black people. It's always pushed under the rug. And there was no exception to the rule in terms of this either. So after being an advocate and standing up for us in the workplace, I got into um, a little meeting with management and, you know, I was just bringing, bringing facts to them where it's just like, you know, the unfair treatment for some of the people that the colored people in the workplace feel. You know, a lot of people were very timid and scared to talk to pe to speak up for themselves. So I was always the mouthpiece for Sephora and everybody under the sun. I would always risk my job speaking up for people and the injustice that we all were experiencing. So back in my old store, sorry for jumping around, guys. I noticed that, you know, we would celebrate St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day. Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, Pride, you name it. We would celebrate those things. And we would have like buttons we'd have to wear and, you know, do like makeup. When the time come, came, we had to do makeup inspired looks and stuff like that. And they would blast like emails or they would turn, they would change the website to, you know, fit the theme of whatever we're celebrating at the time for the month or whatever the case may be. But what I noticed is that when Caravan Weekend came around, there wasn't celebration like that. And last time I checked, Caravan had brought in a lot of money for Sephora and a lot of businesses whenever. But we never did like inspired looks there was never pins that represented the culture or anything like that nothing and then i noticed with black history month would it come about and there was never a change in the website sephora never changed the websites to represent black history month we never had pins to represent black history month not one time not one time we had every single pin to represent everything i just said i remember even t-shirts to represent indigenous like we had orange shirts and stuff like that which was fine but we never they never gave us anything to represent black history month right i also noticed that they would never push the black brands in sephora when Black History Month came around, do you think the front house table was ever labeled or labeled or sorry, ridden with anything, any black products? Never. It was never the forefront. They never, like I said, they never changed. They never sent out emails about it. They never focused on it. And I would give suggestions. I'd be like, okay, so what are we doing for Black History Month? Can we push the black brands? Can we just, can we do that? Nothing. They would say, okay, yeah, let's do that. And nothing. And everybody, if you guys paid attention and we're working at Sephora, you can attest to this. 
So coming up on my last Black history experience at Sephora, I experienced, I don't even know what to call it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to say my story and you call it what you want to call it. But I had locks at the time. And okay, before I get into that story, there was an instant where one of the managers decided to say, let's celebrate Black History Month and, and um, celebrate somebody on the internet or whoever random uh, for the week, every week until Black History Month is done. And to show how insensitive these people were, they would just put, pick up some random young little beauty influencer and stick them up on the wall and say, this is our beauty um, inspired inspiration for Black History Month. And I'm like, how do you take <laughs> a random 20 year old 15 year old person that's just doing makeup on their skin on their face just for fun and rep and think that's supposed to represent black history month and the beauty industry how do you how do you get that not like you're putting up like you know iman who came up with you know iman cosmetics back in the day or fashion fair and you know those black brands that were around back, back in the day and and represented it it's not like you guys were digging deep to even say hey let's celebrate how some some of the black um beauty influencers from back or or you know makeup brands from back in the day they didn't do none of that and i there was one time <laughs> i was sitting there with two of my managers and in the morning before the store opened and it was opening time and I had my locks at the time this manager found this random girl on YouTube printed out her picture and said oh this is who we're going to like celebrate for the week again guys I watch YouTube I've never seen this girl a day in my life I don't even know the girl's name to this day just a random so it's just like what's the point there's no effort in what you're doing you're just doing this for fun I felt very disrespected about that entire situation. But anyways, I digress, guys. I digress. So I'm sitting down there, and these two managers are there. And one of the managers, the store director at the time, she's like, oh, let's call her Susan. Oh, Susan, um, who's this Who's this girl? It felt like it was so planned. Who's this, who's this one? Who's this girl that we're celebrating this week? And she's like, oh, um, well, she vlogs and she's following her lock journey. Her lock journey. I'm the only person that has locks in my store. Oh, um, yeah, she just, she's following her lock journey. Again, the girl had no locks at all in the picture. So I'm like, okay. I'm just probably on my phone just listening to them. It's the three of us literally right there. And she's like, oh, well, what, did I, what name did I give her? Sharon. I'll call, call her Sharon. Sharon says, oh, to the store director, so-and-so, are you going to start your lock journey? And mind you, this is two Caucasian ladies, okay? Two Caucasian ladies. The store director, bougie as all hell, okay? Bougie, Caucasian lady. So this one is gonna look at her hmm? and ask her, oh, are you gonna start your lock journey? And then she goes like this, no. And then as soon as she realized like she did that, she didn't even look up at me because she realized she made that stank face and let that noise like, no. And then they both looked at me. I looked at them I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. 
And I sat on that for a while, for days. And I said, you know what? No. Had I made a comment like that, do you know I'd have been out the door a long time, right? I would have been out of that door a long, long, long time. And then those same ones would make these jokes, these black jokes, like, oh, I I listen to this and I listen to this kind of music. Oh, I eat this kind of food. Or I can cook this kind of food. Or, you know, the ones that try to be relatable because you have a black friend or you used to sleep with black people. <laughs> and I think some way, somehow you can just relate to us. that what was going on we couldn't even have a conversation with people in the workplace that were non black or not colored without them trying to be relatable and not understanding it's so offensive to even try to talk to us like that and this is management I took this to head office and guess what guys in true Sephora fashion, nothing was done. I said, did you guys even talk to them about this? Oh, we did, we did, we did, we did. I didn't get an apology. It was turned around on me because I said, I've had a conversation with management when they just felt like my presence and my energy was just too large and too forward and i told them that i'm not playing their games i am a black woman that speaks the way i speak and i'm not conforming to anybody's standards because i need to be digestible for you guys it went to a whole rant about race and it got turned around on me you know guys i really hope that one day that i can actually go into way more details about what I, I'm trying to say here. And I know this may sound very all over the place because I'm trying to be mindful of what I'm saying because I don't know how much I can really say. But I really pray for a platform where I can actually say what I need to say about my real experience there. I left that place very much hurt because I was there for six years and was just crushed i was there was there's no growth in sephora if they don't like you your work ethics doesn't even matter like they can't even get out of their feelings to even help you and for me i felt the abuse that i was going through working for sephora and so many people saw it so many people witnessed the abuse that I encountered working for Sephora. That company broke my spirit, okay? But I needed the job and they took me for granted and they took advantage of me. I was strong enough but also I couldn't leave because I can go on leaves like a lot of people that are a lot of people take stress leaves. A lot of people right now that I ran into from Sephora recently are on stress leave because of that company and the people that they hire and the people that they're working for. It sucks the soul out of you. The pain and suffering that I encountered in that work environment, I find myself taking it to my new work environment. And I have to unlearn all of that. And I can't believe how much that place really affected me. And <laughs> I say this to say, you guys, if you ever want to work for Sephora, don't. The only good thing about Sephora is the gratis, to be honest. You will not benefit from working for Sephora. And I'm saying it straight up, you will not. And ask anybody that has experienced Sephora and they will say the exact same thing. 
this has been my personal experience and my feelings and I wish that a lot more people were brave enough to come on camera and speak about their experience while working for Sephora. So many of us put our blood, sweat and tears into that company and received nothing. And a lot of the times it was us, the black women or the colored people in that company that just couldn't get a break, was overlooked, <laughs> found every excuse in the book not to promote us, not to elevate us, and kept us right where they wanted us, at the bottom of the barrel. I'm gonna end this video here, guys. But I hope you got my drift. I hope you appreciate my honesty, but this is my truth. And I couldn't just not speak on it. I don't know what's gonna come about this video, but I just felt like compelled to say what I needed to say, the little that I could say that was reflecting me and my experience again. But you guys, that was one of the worst places I have ever encountered. Yeah, and I'm saying it and it is what it is. <sighs> Off my chest. I just wanna say to all of my girlies that are still there, the girls that I know, you guys, I mean, if that's where your heart is still, you know, and I know a lot of you guys just, you guys have to work there because you have to make ends meet and all that good stuff. Keep strong, but <laughs> I wish you all the best and I hope that things change in that company for you guys. But just know that there's better out there for you guys. And um, I'm always here for you to be a listening ear. And I'm doing this video for us. I'm, I'm doing it for us. And you guys know who you guys know I speak up for all of us all the time in true Tristan form. I have to speak my mind no matter what. And everything that I said, the little that I said in this video, guys, are facts and can be proven. I really wish that I had a lawyer that would go and help me really with the pain and suffering that I suffered, endured with that company. I really wish that I, I had that opportunity. I still might because there's so many things that I documented, so many things. Anyways, we're gonna leave it there. And um, yeah. See you guys in the next video.